Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Manuel Antonio Ruiz Rodriguez and today I'm going to do the presentation of the results that I obtained during my thesis which is entitled Modeling of the Electrostatic Interaction and Catalytic Activity of Nickel Iron Hydrogen Assets on a Planar Electrode. This is part of the requirements that I need to do in order to obtain the PhD grade in materials engineering in the Politecnico of Milano. And my thesis advisor in this institution was the Professor Widow Rouse. Uh, if I talk a little about myself, I can say that I, well, first I am from Mexico. I start my career to doing uh, the Bachelor in Marine Biology. After that, I jumped to material, uh, Biochemical Engineering. I, I did my Master. And after that, I jumped to Materials Engineering. So, in this moment, I am doing the PhD. So, with nothing more to say, I would like to go ahead with the presentation. Uh, let's do, to start. The general aim of my research is to discover how to use hydrogen assets to produce hydrogen. I am very interested in hydrogen assets because these enzymes can catalyze the redox reaction of iron. Uh, this means that these enzymes can bond two protons to ele two electrons to generate a molecule of hydrogen, or they can, in the reverse way, break a molecule of hydrogen to produce two protons and two electrons. And then uh, the generation of electrons is a flux of the electrons uh, at the end this is uh, an electric current. So that is the general idea of why I am interested in this kind of enzymes. And in this moment raises the question of why I am very interested in the hydrogen. And the reason is because hydrogen can be used to store energy. For example, if I have uh, renewable energies or renewable ways to produce uh, energy, for example, solar solar panels, I can generate energy in the way of a flux of electrons, but at the end I can store electricity. So uh, hydrogen co can allow me to uh, store that energy in the way of chemical bonds. For example, the electricity at the end, if I use it to generate hydrogen, the energy of the electricity can be stored in the in the chemical bonds of the of the hydrogen molecule, and that hydrogen molecule I can store it and then in in big tanks. We have to remember that at the end the uh, the hydrogen, well, the molecule of hydrogen is just gas, so I can store it in big tanks. And once that I require again to recover that en and that energy, I can recover it in the way of electricity using um, electric fuel, well, uh, fuel cells. And once that I recover that electricity, I can use it for different purposes, for example, for transportation, for empower a full city, etc., etc., etc. So for me, that is the main reason for what we need to focus and develop different ways to produce hydrogen. Well, now we know that the hydrogen assets catalyze the redox reaction of hydrogen can be used for renewable energies. Now the second question is where well, where I can find these enzymes? Uh, these enzymes can be found in bacteria, archaea and, eub and eukarya. Uh, this is the groups and water separated the, all the living organisms. Uh, that means that these enzymes can be found in a lot, well they are involved in a lot of uh, metabolic pathways. For example, they are involved in fermentation, phosphorylation, or reductive reactions. Um, because they are involved in a lot of uh, metabolic pathways, you can find these enzymes as in well, in different parts of the cell. For example, in, bacter in bacteria and archaea, the well, these enzymes, hydrogenases, can be found in the cytoplasm, in the cellular membrane, or in the periplasm. Well, now we know that the hydrogen assets catalyze the redox reaction of hydrogen, can be used for renewable energies. Now the second question is where, where I can find these enzymes? Uh, these enzymes can be found in bacteria, archaea, and, and eukarya. 
Uh, this is the groups and wires separated the, all the living organisms. Uh, that means that these enzymes can be found in a lot, well, they are involved in a lot of uh, metabolic pathways. For example, they are involved in fermentation, phosphorylation, or reductive reactions. And um, because they are involved in a lot of uh, uh, metabolic pathways, you, you can find these enzymes as in, well, in different parts of the cell. For example, in, bacte in bacteria and archaea, they, well, these enzymes, hydrogenases, can be found in the cytoplasm, in the cellular membrane, or in the periplasm. The hydrogenases that I select for my research was the hydrogenases selected from the sulfovidrio, the sulfocarins. No, the number of the strain is in the screen. And this hydrogenase has the peculiarity that, it, that is a uh, nickel iron hydrogenase. Well, uh, the main characteristic of this enzyme is that it's composed, well, the catalytic center of this enzyme is composed by one atom of nickel and one atom of iron. Uh, basically, it's a hydrogenase that belongs to a sulfato-reducing bacteria. That means that this bacteria can be found in a wide range of environments. You can find it in marine sediments. Even it has been found in hydrothermal vents. But in general, you can find it in sediments, also in freshwater sediments. And just for curiosity, uh, is uh, the hydrogenase, uh, well, at least the research that reported the, the structure, he reported that there was hydrogenase that was found in the, peri in the periplans of the cell and was and this enzyme was associated with a uh, cytochrome C3. In this slide, you can see a picture of uh, how it looks at uh, the sulfovidrio, just to have a reference. This enzyme has the characteristic that uh, has a heterodimeric structure. That means that it's composed by two subunits. So one is small and another that is a little bigger. Uh, the small subunit is approximately 27 kilodaltons. The big subunit is 62 kilodaltons. In the picture, we can see it with the uh, colors of green for the small one and purple for the big subunit. Another important characteristic is that in these uh, subunits we want to have uh, important uh, structures for the, for the catalyzation of the redox reaction of hydrogen. In the small subunit we want to have uh, three iron sulfur clusters. They are important because previous uh, but previous research has demonstrated that uh, they work more like a Y for the transfer of electrons from the exterior of the protein. And in the big sock unit that is in purple, we're going to find the catalytic center. The catalytic center is uh, the place where the redox reaction really happens. There are more, a little more characteristics that you can see, you can read in the slides, but in general, these are the main characteristics of this enzyme. The main reason for why I select this enzyme is mainly for the crystal, for the for the resol resolution of the crystal structure. Uh, for my research, well, this is important in my research because I need to know exactly where are the position of the different atoms that compose the, the protein. And to obtain that, I need the biggest resolution and the crystal structures that I can get. Uh, First, uh, the crystal structure is pulsed in the PDV data bank, and in the PDV data bank, you can get the PDV file that is just a list of the coordinates of the different atoms. For that reason, because at the end I work with just with calculations, I need a good information for the input of my calculations. So I need good coordinates of the of the different atoms of the protein. And for the reason it's important for me the resolution of the crystal structure. 
Now that I have explained that I want to use hydrogen assets to produce hydrogen and that I want to uh, immobilize these enzymes in the surface of the electron for search purpose, I need to explain how different researchers have tried to resolve the problem of immobilized proteins and surfaces. In general surfaces, in my case, the surface is going to be the electron. And this can be done by general, we can separate the two ways. I can uh, for a hard way to attach the uh, protein in the surface of the electrode that's going to be mainly by covalent bonds that means that this is going to be a chemical absorption and another way is use a uh, softer interactions in this case uh, we are talking about the uh, physical absorption and uh, mainly i am using interactions that uh, in general i can i can break in some way that, uh, well, in this case, I can use uh, hydrogen bonding, Van der Waals forces, hydrophobic interactions, or in the case of my research, uh, electrostatic interactions. And this is the, the, the interaction to, well, the weight of how I want to immobilize the proteins in the surface of my electrode. In my case, what I want to do is to place the protein in the surface of one electrode and then I want to pass a flux of electrons in the electrode. This is going to generate an electrostatic interaction for the attraction between the charge of the protein and the electrons that are in the, in the electrode. First, with this, uh, what I want to want to obtain is to absorb the protein in the surface of the electrode, and second, I want to control the orientation of the protein in the surface of the electrode. Why I want to control the orientation of the protein in the surface of the electrode is because, uh, for me, I consider that the orientation going to have a very important role for the catalytic activity of enzyme. This is mainly because uh, previous articles have reported that the orientation of the protein is important mainly because if, uh, if we, well it's mainly because uh, there are there are specific points where the electrons can enter enzyme of the in, uh, in the enzyme to catalyze the radical reaction and this uh, entrance point is the external iron sulfur cluster. This external iron sulfur cluster is the iron sulfur cluster that you can see that is external, that is for that is the reason of the name. But uh, this entrance point is suggested, or at least for me the idea is, if this entrance point is close to the surface of the electrode, going to allow me to use part of the flux of the electrons that I have in my electrode to fit the catalytic reaction of the enzyme and in that way uh, make easy the production of hydrogen for the enzyme and in that way I can produce hydrogen. In order to advance a little more in the presentation first what well, I mentioned that I want to absorb my protein in, in the surface of the electrode using electrostatic interactions so I need to define what are the electrostatic interactions and uh, this can be described as the forces of attraction and repulsion between objects with positive and negative charges. And uh, well, these uh, forces depend on the magnitude of the charges and the distance that exists between them. For the distance, uh, this remembers us the Coulomb law that uh, has described this attraction but the column law is a very simple model because only describe the electrostatic interaction between, between two charged particles in the real life like uh, proteins we need uh, more complex systems uh, e well for these more complex systems I need to mention that uh, uh, it's not a new question. A lot of researchers from ooh, very old times have tried to describe these electrostatic interactions. Uh, one of these models has, uh, was created probably at the beginnings of the uh, 20th century. is the model is the model of Poisson-Boltzmann. 
this model uh, I'm going to explain with a little with a little more detail in the next slides but this uh, is uh, used a lot to explain uh, biological systems the model of the Poisson Boltzmann is based uh, in a partial differential equation that describes the distribution of the electrostatic potential and the concentration of ions in charged particles when the particle is in uh, ionic solution. This is applied because in my model I consider that the protein is going to be submerged in a solution and this solution is going to be a solution of the sodium chloride. So for that reason I am using the model of Poisson, uh, the model of, uh, Poisson Boltzmann. Something that I need to mention about the distribution of the ions, as you can see in the picture, uh, if I have my protein, and my protein going to be formed uh, a layer of ions of uh, positive uh, sign. This happen. Uh, well, imagine that you have uh, you have the protein. If we make a zoom to the surface of the protein. We're going to have we, we can see that in the surface of the protein the surface of the protein going to have a, a determinate uh, charge with a determinate sign um, covering the surface uh, it is going to generate that uh, the charged particles with a positive sign going to be attracted in our case because we are talking about ions in solution going to be ions with a positive sign and this is going to create a layer where we have an accumulation of that ions now this is going to create well this is going to change the distribution of the ions in the solution so the Poisson Boltzmann is going to help us to pro, to model the, the distribution of the electrostatic potential along the distribution of these ions and more or less to in general words i can say that distribution of the destructive position going to decrease as we go far on the surface of the of the protein and all this information at the end is described in a mathematical model in the equation that you can see uh, in the slide the Poisson Boltzmann model is a differential equation that is used to describe the electrostatic potential between particles in an ionic solution. Um, in order to use this uh, equation, first we need to accept uh, some assumptions. Uh, between the most important we can mention first the continuity of the medium uh, the model assumes that the medium in, in which the charged particles are located is continuous and is homogeneous that means the, uh, that the dielectric properties uh, of the medium and the solute are constant uh, for example in our model for the protein we accept a dielectric constant of 4 for the value of the protein and in the case in the case of the medium that is water with salt, we op, we are using to well, in my case I am using the, the the electric constant of the water that the value is 80. But uh, as I said previously, uh, we consider that they are constants. Another assumption that we are going to consider it is the distribution of the ions in the solution going to follow the distribution of Bols or Boltzmann. Also, we need to consider that the charts are fixed. This is important in our case, mainly for the protein, because we consider that every atom that the, well, that compose the protein is going to have a chart, and they are going to be fixed. So the coordinate for that atom that contains a partial charge that belongs to the protein is going to be fixed. So they are not moving. It's another assumption that we need to consider. It. Another assumption is that the well, it's possible to use a linearized version of the of the Poisson Boltzmann equation, but in this case, if we want to use this model, we need to assume that we want to apply very low electric potentials. And the reason for this is because the small electric potentials doesn't have a significant effect in the ion distribution.
and uh, the problem comes that if we are using extreme potentials uh, we can predict very well the distribution of the ions so we have we need to consider that limitation another consideration or assumption can, that we need to consider is the the y hook condition in this case the model uh, uh, is using situ uh, well we we using situations where the the y length is uh, smaller well, this is smaller compared with the dimensions of the system uh, we can use it but the problem comes when the system is a little bigger uh, this uh, happened because the wavelength is a measure of the attenuation of the electrostatic interaction due to the presence of ions in the solutions and finally well and we need to mention that these assumptions are important to understand the limitations of the Poisson uh, Boltzmann model in my case, when well, in my case of my research, the main uh, disadvantage is that I can predict the behavior of the protein with the high electric potentials. Well, when I apply high electric potentials to the electrode. So it's one of the limitations that I consider at the moment to apply my model. Well, in this point, I would like to mention that the relationship that exists between the electrostatic potential and the energy. Uh, starting from a very general idea, uh, I would like to say that it's possible to calculate the potential energy making the multiplication between the value of, of a test shark, I mean the shark that uh, is associated to a specific point and the electric potential calculated for that specific point. With the making the multiplication again I can obtain the potential energy. Because we are working with electrostatic potential, I can rename the potential energy as the electrostatic potential energy. It's the same. Um, because in my system, uh, I am considering a protein submerged in a solution, when in an ionic solution of sodium chloride. The idea is that in the case of the protein, that test charge is going to be the atomic charge. Of the, of the atoms that compose the, the protein and going to be the charges or the ions that are in solution around the protein. So making the, the multiplications I can obtain the electrostatic potential energy for every point and then I can just make a summatory and then I obtain the, the value for all the system. Finally, I need to mention that the electrostatic potential energy is also known as the Coulomb's energy and the definition is that it represents the potential energy associated with the electrostatic interaction between charged particles. I have already mentioned that the aim of this research is to discover how to produce hydrogen using hydrogen assays. Both in this point, I would like to mention the specific goals. Uh, the main goal is uh, to calculate the electrostatic interaction between a nickel iron hydrogen assay and the surface of one electrode. Uh, for that purpose, I consider some factors that previously have been reported that affect the electrostatic interaction. For example, I consider the pH, the salinity, and the electric potential applied to the electrode. A secondary goal of this research is to determine it if it is possible to control the orientation of the hydrogen assay on the surface of the electrode by tuning these variables. Uh, this is because uh, previous studies have uh, reported that the orientation of the protein is very important for the activity, mainly because uh, the orientation can favor the transfer of the electrons from the exterior of the protein to the catalytic center. And this is related with the third goal, so affects the third goal, that is to determine the activity of the absorbed enzymes as a function of the enzyme concentration. This is based in the assumption that there is a relationship between the absorption equilibria and the transfer of the electrons between the hydrogen assay and the electrode.
Now that uh, I had defined the goals of my research, I would like to talk a little about how I did the calculations. To start, uh, I would like to talk about the physical model. For the calculations, I used the structure of the Hydrogenasa 1E3D. 1E3D is the code for the PDB file that I download from the PDB data bank. For, for the calculations, I have to, well, I had to accept some uh, assumptions. The first one is that the structure of my protein was uh, rigid. Uh, that means that the coordinates for each atom that compose my protein uh, are fixed. They are not, they are not changing. So this is well, it's a consequence to for use uh, the PDB file of the crystal structure of a protein. And the second assumption that I have to do for do the calculation was to consider that for each atom of my protein, I want to have a fixed charge. So the charge for my calculations don't change too. And finally, to create my model, I had to consider it uh, to create a mesh. Uh, this mesh uh, is used to delimit the inside and the exterior of the protein, and it's very important to do the calculations. So to create the mesh, I use the method of the solvent excluding surface. Uh, basically, this method consists in rotate uh, an sphere with the diameter of the of the molecule of the solvent in which is submerged my protein. In my case, it's water, so I I use the diameter of a molecule of water, and with this I create the mesh. The mesh the, was created with the software uh, NanoShaper with some parameters that you can see in the publication. Another important point that I need to mention for the model was that first I used the linearized version of the Poisson-Boltzmann equation for all the calculations. That implies that I need to consider that the solvent is implicit. Remember that my solvent is, uh, as, is an ionic solution of water with sodium chloride. Also, uh, I consider that I'm going to have two dielectric constants, uh, one for the protein and another for the solution. For the protein, I select the value of 4 because it was previously reported. Uh, for the solvent, I select the, the electric constant of water, so the value of 80. And also, I need to mention that the dimensions of the electrode, uh, well, was modulated was as a rectangular cuboid with the dimensions of 250 Armstrongs times 250 Armstrongs times 10 Armstrongs. And the idea was to simulate a not so big uh, electrode, so was more or less proportional to the size of the of the protein. The protein is not so small, not so big, but the selection of the size for the electrode and the selection of the protein was more related with the computational power, because if I select two big uh, dimensions, the calculations. Uh, becomes very slow to perform to perform and also another thing that I need to mention to the effect to the speed of the calculations is the density of the triangles the, of the triangles of the mesh so uh, it's necessary to be careful with these values at the moment to do the calculations another point that I want to mention for the calculation of this research is inclusion of the star layers the star layers for this research are defined as ion exclusion layers and uh, the idea of include this layer is because I consider it uh, at the moment uh, when I submerge my protein in an ionic solution and I'm going to have an accumulation of ions with a positive charge along the surface of the protein. Basically, we can imagine it that if I have a wall, a negative wall, I'm going to have an accumulation of charged particles, a, post a positive charged particles, creating a layer that runs parallel to the surface of the wall. And between these two, uh, I'm going to have nothing. So for that reason, it's an ion exclusion layer. 
In the model for the calculations, these uh, 10 layers were considered both for the protein and for the electrode. The experimental model used in this uh, research uh, was designed considering the effects of the variable so solution PAs, the electron potential applied on the electrode, and salt concentration in the solution. Uh, the reason for why I select these uh, variables was because they were previously reported as very important for the absorption of the protein, or general proteins. Also, uh, for example, in the case of the pH, uh, for me it was very important to avoid the, na the naturalization of the protein. And the range of 5 to 9 was the range where previously was uh, known that the hydrogenases can uh, survive, well, they can maintain his catalytic activity. So for me it was very important to maintain an active enzyme uh, in the surface of the electrode because at the end I want to use hydrogenases for the production of hydrogen. The same uh, criteria was used for the election of the electric potential because if I use very high electric potentials, probably I can denaturalize the protein or at least I can uh, uh, break it or damage in some way that uh, don't going to be active anymore. Uh, for the reason was the selection of these variables. And, and the same happened with the concentration of the salts. In the case of the concentration of the salts, uh, 0 0.50 molar, is uh, more or less the concentration of the salt uh, physiological conditions. So that is the main reason for why I select these uh, parameters of so this range for the experimental designs of the research doing in this thesis. Well, in this point, I would like to talk a little bit about the flow chart that I had to follow in order to do the calculations. Uh, everything started at the point when I obtained the PDB uh, file. Uh, I need to mention that the ones that I obtained the PDB file, I had to edit it. I had to remove all the unwished the atoms. We need to remember that when the PDB files are published, they, uh, well, the research, they publish the structure with uh, all the atoms, not only of the protein. But that implies that in the structure you can find atoms that doesn't belong to the proteins. So in my case, I had to remove all that atoms using the software PDB edit editor. Also, I had to select the atoms with the highest probability of occurring in a determinate position. And after that, once that you have the structure that uh, you desire to do the calculations, in my case was uh, I select the chains A and B to do the calculations, that creates a functional heterodimer. Uh, the next step is to calculate the protonation state of the protein, in this case my enzyme, at uh, different pHs. So in theory you can do this uh, uh, directly using the software PDB to PQR. However, the, the software PDB to Q, the PQR has the inconvenient that can assign partial charge to atomic atoms. So I need to resolve this problem uh, calculating sharp sharks using the software OPCA, ORCA. I need to talk a little more at this point, uh, but I'm going to talk uh, in detail in the next slides because it's, uh, it's interesting how to overcome this problem. Um, after that, once that I obtain the PQR, uh, I also need to create the mesh of the structure. So for the mesh of the structure of the PQR file, I have to use the software NanoShaper. Once the final, I, I have the mesh one for the protein, the charge of the atoms of the protein, and the mesh from the electrode. Uh, the mesh of the electrode I created using a script of Python. Uh, basically, you only draw um, a cuboid uh, with, the, with the code of Python. It's not very difficult. And after that, once that you have this information, you can submit uh, all the information to do the calculation PIGB. Big B, uh, the input, uh, he requires a text file that indicates the, the who is organized the information. Basically, you need to indicate the where is the mesh, uh, the charge, uh, the mesh, well, the mesh for the protein, the mesh for the electrode, the charge. 
and uh, once well need to be organized in some structure but with more detail for more details you can read the manuals of big b but this uh, is it's a little it's not complicated but you need to f it's necessary to read the manual to really understand how the software works and uh, well once that you submit all the information to pigby and indicate to pigby to do the calculations uh, pigby obtains the electrostatic potential and finally with the uh, with the information of the electrostatic potential in my case i create some scripts in python to create the graphical representations of the of the protein with the electrostatic potential calculated so uh, basically i use the mesh created with dino shaper and that uh, file contains also the information for the exotatic potential calculated for each triangle that composes the mesh of the protein so with that i create a, a colorful image of the protein uh, 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 with the electrostatic potential in the surface also, the information of the resultant potential was used for the heat maps that uh, were used to represent the results that I obtained during the research. So, in order to resolve the problem of assigned charge of the metallic atoms in the catalytic center and the iron sulfur clusters, what I did was uh, obtain the char uh, charts using DFT calculations uh, using ORCA. Uh, some of the parameters that I used uh, for to perform this calculation was to do the calculations with different uh, spin multiplicities and total charge uh, for uh, for the catalytic center and for the iron sulfur clusters and the choice of the of the charge that uh, then I calculate with uh, with the ORCA was uh, based in the lowest energy results so that values were the values that I used for to modify the parameters of the AMBER file and then calculate the partial charts in the software of PDB to PQR maybe this sounds a little complex but it's not so complex basically what i did again was i obtained the coordinates of the atoms in this picture you can see the catalytic center so i did the same i took the atoms of the catalytic center the iron sulfur clusters each one and in the protein these structures are bounded to the rest of the structure of the protein through uh, cysteines so what i did was to remove the cysteines that maintain the frame inside of the protein and i replaced it by metal groups so with the coordinates as i take it from the pdb file and replace the systems with metal groups i create a structure and that the structure is the structure that i submitted to the to, for that i submitted for the calculations in orca in order to obtain the the shell uh, charge once that i have the child charts the next step is to incorporate this information in the creation of the pqr file so in order to do that what i did was to modify the ambers force field file that is inside of the software pdb to pqr imagine that inside of this uh, software there are several folders in uh, one of the folders you can find a lot of file text uh, that contains the information of the four fields that can be used for pdb to pqr so what i did was to open the file and create new entries basically the these files is just a table with the information of the atoms and the charts that are assigning uh, to the atoms in determinate circumstance so what i did was to create a new residue name for the groups of the atoms that uh, my case uh, correspond to the catalytic center and another resume names for the group of the atoms that correspond to the uh, iron sulfur cluster for the medial uh, uh, center central and external iron sulfur cluster and with that given the name and then uh, <coughs> given the name of the resume and then indicated to each uh, to each atom they are connected between them 
I can assign the partial charts in that conditions and then the software is going to recognize that okay if I have uh, for example an iron connected with a nickel inside of a, a residue that correspond to the catalytic center I need to assign these partial charts so the software recognizes this information and in this case I can create the, the PQR that I need for the calculation in PIGB so once that I did, uh, that I did uh, this modification in the Amber Force field inside of PDB to PQR, for me it was possible now to calculate the protonation state for all the protein, in including the well, including the effect of the partial charge that are inside of the protein and the catalytic center, and uh, of the uh, and the ions of the cluster that are inside of the protein. So at the end here you can see a table with a sample of how looks the PQR created for for this enzyme. <coughs> uh, finally, I need to mention that the PDB to PQR use the PROPCA method to assign the protonation state for the protein at different pHs. Uh, the charts that were assigned to the atoms inside of the protein using PDB to PQR are fixed points, so are at the end are fixed for the calculations. And also, when you create the PQR, you can obtain the information of the total charge of the protein and his dipole moment. <coughs> In the case of PIGB, PIGB is a software that solves the linearized version of the Poisson-Boltzmann equation uh, using the boundary element method. And the main characteristic of this software is that use the GPO, GPUs of the computers to do the calculations. Also, it's a collection of the scripts uh, wrote in Python. From that comes the name uh, PIGB. That means Python GPU boundary integra integral software for electro for electrostatics. And well, uh, is the software that we uh, that I am using in uh, in this research to do the calculation and obtain the values of the energy for my system. The output of PIGP for one orientation are containing in in one folder. Uh, the folder, the name of the folder, obviously, is output. But inside of that, uh, inside of that folder, you can find four files. One of the files that is important is the output.log file. It's a text file that contains all the information of the calculation. Uh, the most important is that in this um, file uh, are reported the values of the uh, column energy, the solvation energy, and the surface energy. And there are the results that uh, is obtained for PIGB. In my case, because I am interested in the interaction energy, the logic to calculate the interaction energy was okay. If I have the total energy for the full system, for in my case, my system is the protein plus the electrode. I can calculate the energy for the different parts that compose my system. So I can calculate the energy for the protein alone, and I can calculate the energy for the for the electrode alone. And with that values, I can subtract it to the to the total energy that uh, was obtained for the for the system composed for the protein and the electrode. And with that, I can obtain the the interaction energy. So at the end, the interaction energy is obtained subtracting the value that I obtained from the total energy, when the, the, en the protein plus the electron, minus the energy obtained used for the protein, minus the energy obtained used for the electron. And with that, I obtained the, the interaction energy. In the case orientation, what I did was to write some scripts in Python to change the coordinates of the different atoms. Imagine it, for example, that the protein is composed by protein for atoms. And that atoms are at the end in the PDB file. In the PQR file are used coordinates. Uh, it's a number, a number, a number, three numbers, X, Y, Z. And the idea is I can write a function to change the position of that um, of that uh, of that atoms. So obtaining a new set of coordinates. If, if I apply the same function for all the atoms, I can rotate the protein. More or less is the general idea. 
Uh, in my case, I was very interested in test all the possible orientations, but uh, because that will require a lot of uh, computational power and time, I decided to put the the number of the orientations that I I could test. So in order to do that, I use uh, rot I rotate the the protein, for example, every. 10 degrees in the inclination angle and in the case of the acetamol angle I rotate the following the expression that is in the screen and that reduces a lot the number of uh, orientations so that then uh, for one combination in the experimental variables that I am testing for example if I want to test the combination of the protein on the uh, 0.50 molar of salt uh, electric potential of 0 0.05 volts and uh, pH 5 I have uh, 30 90 orientations used for that combination so for all the combinations I create all the orientations and then I, I do the I did the calculations to obtain the results with big Bang. Now that I can control the orientation of the protein using the scripts in Python and I can obtain the energy or switch orientation using PigB. Uh, for me, arise the idea of, of uh, determining the probability of obtaining switch orientation. Uh, basically, this, arise, this idea arises because I imagine that, for example, in the real life, if I have an electrode and I make an extraction of the protein and then I cover the electrode with that protein. At the end, the I'm going to have uh, proteins with a uh, different orientations. The, okay, the electro going to be covered, but going to be covered with proteins with different orientations. So to try to create uh, a model for determine the probability of obtaining a determined orientation, I use the Boltzmann distribution model for probabilities. Basically, this model tells me that the orientations with the lowest energy are going to be the most probably the of occur. Uh, the model basically uh, relates the probability with the energy. So for me, the orientations with the lowest value of energy are going to be the orientations with the highest probability of occur. So going to be the most probably orientations that are going to happen on the surface of the electrode. In order to modulate the absorption of the hydrogen acid on the surface of the electrode, I use the Lightmere mo absorption model. Uh, this model is a similar of the of the model of the reactions between two chemical rea reagents. We can imagine it, for example, the, the protein going to be a uh, one chemical reagent, for example, A, and the surface of the electrode going to be the chemical reagent M. So the reaction between these two chemical reagents going to create a product. More or less, is the same. Is the same idea, but in this case, uh, I am interested in in, in modeling the absorption. So I consider that the union of the protein with the uh, with the electrode going to create uh, a product this this product going to be the union between a protein and the surface so considering the this similar uh, this similar idea i can uh, consider that i going to have a constant this constant is uh, going to be the rate constant for the absorption. In the case when the with the protein and the prod and the surface of the electrode and are bonded, in this case when I have the absorption of the protein and the surface of the electrode, and in the rever in the in the reverse pe in the reverse pathway I'm going to have the rate constant for the the source of the of the protein uh, when the protein is uh, released from the surface of the electrode. With these ideas, I can consider it that the rate of absorption and the rate of the desorption going to be the same. So I can uh, apply some mathematics and then I can obtain the equation to calculate the coverage of the surface by the protein. Uh, 
it is going to be Kai in the screen and the interesting thing is that once that I can calculate the the coverage of the electrode I can calculate well I can calculate the coverage of the electrode for one orientation but the same idea I can calculate the the uh, the coverage of the electrode for all the orientations so in that way I can calculate the overall coverage for all the electrode considering all the possible orientations uh, for a determined combination of experimental variables the idea is to obtain the uh, well to obtain the overall equilibrium constant for the absorption of the of the protein on the surface of the electrode the important thing of this uh, constant is going to be that if the value of k is big that means that the affinity of the protein for the electro is big and for that reason the absorption of the protein is big and is good uh, but the contrary if the value of k is, is low that means that I have a low affinity of the protein for the surface of the electrode in this case my hydrogenase for the surface of the electrode and for that reason the absorption is not so good or is not so efficient under the experimental conditions that I am testing the detail with this model is that I need to accept uh, some assumptions between the most important is that uh, first uh, the protein is going to behave like um, uh, like a gas like an ideal gas uh, that implies that the proteins don't going to interact for example in the real life if I have the proteins in the surface of the electrode the most probably is that they are going to interact between them but in order to apply the Langmuir model I need to accept the assumption that that don't going to happen the second assumption that I need to accept is that uh, for every available space that I have for the absorption of one protein uh, uh, this space is going to be occupied uh, the problem with this assumption is that uh, uh, going to well the consequence is that I want to have the formation of a, of a single layer the problem is that uh, well again if I have an space and then I attach one protein and only one protein at the end I want to cover the, the total surface of the electrode okay that is perfect but in the real life the most probably because the protein interact between them the most probably is that in one space I want to have probably one protein and uh, on that protein I want to have another protein so I want to have uh, probably going to have the formation of two layers and the model of like mirror the doesn't allow me to, to model to model these kind of things so and it's probably something that happened in the real life so it's something that is not considered for the Legmir model another uh, assumption is that all the sites available in the surface of the electrode are equi equivalent so there are no preferences for the absorption of the protein that is something that uh, I don't know for, uh, what could happen because uh, probably in the real life maybe that could be some uh, some some the electrode with a uh, high affinity for the for the proteins uh, maybe I exactly I don't know but maybe it's something that I can consider that could happen uh, exist other extra uh, assumptions for the model of the uh, like mirror but in my case I decide to use this model because it's uh, relatively simple and hello me to model the absorption of the of the hydrogen on the surface of the light broad. Finally, in this point of the talk, I can talk about the electron transfer rates and currents. And the idea in this case is that to modulate the transfer of the electrons between the electrode and the catalytic center of my protein. Um, in my case, I decide to take the distance between the between the external iron sulfur cluster of the hydrogenase and the surface of the electrode the reason for what I did this is because for me uh, well previously has been reported that this is the entrance point for the electrons to the catalytic center of the enzyme 
So in order to have the production of hydrogen, I need a flux of electrons that flew to the catalytic center. But in order to flow to that catalytic center, I need that I enter in, uh, in one point. And that entrance point is the external iron software cluster. So in order to modulate the transfer of the electrons, what I did was, well, I considered that the transfer of the electrons going to be going to going to decrease proportional to the distance. So I just measure the distance between this external idol software cluster and the surface of the electrode. And with that, that calculate the electrons transfer the electron transfer. After R, I calculate the electron transfer, I calculate the reference current density for the determinate orientation. And finally, the idea was with this information, I can calculate the total current. Consider that uh, I already know the coverage of the protein and the, ar the area and the reference uh, current. So with that, I can obtain the total current for the experimental conditions that I am testing. The idea of modeling the transfer of the electrons is because at the end the transfer of the electrons is going to have a direct impact in the activity of the enzyme. So if I have a good uh, transfer of the electrons, I'm going to have a good activity and for that reason I'm going to have a good uh, production of, of hydrogen. And for the reason I modulate this uh, transfer of the electrons. Uh, now that I have explained all the methods that I used that during my thesis, uh, I'm going to talk a little about the results. Uh, the results of this thesis are condensed in this table. Uh, in this table, you can see a lot of lines. Every line corresponds to the values obtained for the orientation with the lowest energy. Remember that for every combination of experimental variables, I did uh, more or less 390 orientations. For that orientations, one had the lowest value of energy, so that uh, value correspond to one of the lines of this table. And uh, here I report all the information. For example, I, re I report the values of the energy. I report the the closest the closest amino acid to the surface of the electrode. The sharp of the ten the ten closest amino acids the minimum of distance and also I report the values of the current and the value of the of K that I mentioned previously in the, in the slides. Uh, for, for this moment, at least for this presentation, the most important is that at least in the case of the energies, I you can see that all the values of the interaction energy for the protein and the electrode are negative. So that means that at least I can uh, absorb the protein on the surface of the electron with the experimental conditions that I tested. However, I, in the table you can see that there are a clear difference between two different groups. The main group says uh, when I apply uh, the presence of salt, uh, sodium chloride, and the absence of sodium chloride, Basically, uh, when I apply salt to the simulations, the interaction energy is not so low. That means that the salt affects the absorption of the protein. And the simulations, when I don't apply salts, uh, the absorption, well, the, the, the interaction energy is uh, lower. So that means that the absorption of the protein is uh, better when I don't apply salts to the simulations. And the rest of the results, uh, as I say, the, you need to check it with more detail. But another thing that I would like to mention at least is the presence, of, well, the recurrent presence of lysins in the when I orientate the protein. So uh, this is important because when I orientate the protein in an, one orientation that favors the absorption of the of the protein in the surface of the electrode, 
I could find the presence of lesions in, the, in that specific zone of the protein. Also, I was very interested in the in the charts of the 10 closest amino acids because uh, part of the discussion uh, that I'm going to explain in the future in the, in the next slices is that uh, when you have some patches of amino acids, they create groups of uh, sharked amino acids that can affect the orientation. So probably it's a way to control the orientation of the protein in the surface of the electrode. But in general, uh, that is the some of the things that I want to talk about is uh, about these results and this slide. In the ne in the next slides, I want to focus uh, to give a, a direction to the discussion. I want to focus in two cases. Basically, uh, what happened when I well, which is uh, which are the conditions where I can get the best absorption of the of the protein when the case the hydrogen acid on the surface of the electron and what are the best conditions in which I have the best uh, transfer of the electrons to the catalytic center because in that case I want to have a high uh, activity of the enzyme so that is the direction in why I address the, the, next, uh, the next slides uh, another result of this thesis uh, was the creation of some scripts in Python for the visualization of the calculations uh, performed in PigB. Uh, for example, here you can see how looks the calculations when I test the combination of pH8, electric, uh, negative electric potential, and ionic strength of zero molar. And here you can see how the protein is rotated uh, in the surface of the electrode. Here is just the visualization, but at the end it's very important to have an idea of how looks the interaction of the protein with the surface of the electrode. In general, uh, for the rest of the simulations, uh, we create simulations, it's possible to see it. Uh, the scripts and the visualizations can be found in the supplementary information of the document of the thesis. But then I just wanted to show you how looks the protein when it rotates in the surface of one electrode. Just for one detail is that if you see that the rotation is not uh, constant, is because you have to remember that in order to accelerate the obtention of the results, I uh, reduce the number of uh, orientations just rotating the protein each uh, 10 degrees. For that reason, is the jumps in the animation, but at least it's good to see the, the animation of how is the interaction of the protein in the surface of the electrode. <coughs> For the results of the interaction areas, as I mentioned previously, uh, all the results that I got were negative, so that means that it's possible to absorb the protein. Uh, comparing the different experimental variables, uh, as I mentioned previously, I can say that the salinity has the main role in the absorption of the protein. Uh, it's a negative uh, role. Uh, basically, the presence of salts uh, uh, inhibits the, the pro inhibits the absorption of the protein. In the case of pH, uh, it's not so very clear, but uh, I can see some uh, some orientations that I can repeat it. Uh, mainly uh, or the orientation 80 tail degrees 131 is one orientation that is repeated uh, consecutively all, uh, around all the pH. And in the case of the electric potential, well, the electric potential then doesn't play an uh, important role in the absorption of the of the protein. However, uh, well, at least in the case of the interaction and the however, uh, looks to have a role in the orientate the protein. Another thing that I would like to mention is that if well I can have a very good absorbed uh, protein in the surface of, of the electrode, uh, I mean uh, orientation with the uh, low interaction energy, uh, that doesn't mean that that orientation is going to be favorably for the transfer of the electrons. Uh, in this moment, uh, in order to address the the discussion of the results, I'm going to make a comparison between two examples. 
For example, here uh, the orientation with the lowest interaction energy was found at 80 degrees and 131 uh, degrees, uh, 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 rotation angles. Um, uh, well, this uh, this uh, orientation was obtained under the conditions of not sal electric not electric potential pH nine. So with this condition, I got uh, a value of minus fifty three dot forty three kilojoules over mole. Uh, this orientation was the orientation with the lowest energy, but as I mentioned previously, is not the orientation that uh, could favor. Uh, the the transfer of the electrons the orientation with the that most favored the transfer of the electrons so with the highest total current uh, was obtained at uh, 110 120 degrees and 248 degrees acetomal uh, and rotation angles and this orientation was obtained under the experimental conditions of uh, not salt and, and not electric potential and a pH 5. So as I mentioned, there is a difference. So not because of one of uh, orientation is good absorbed, that, me that means that they're going to be useful for the transfer of the electrons and for the catalytic activity of the of the hydrogen acid. For the heat model, the electrons transfer rate, uh, well, you can see here that there is a pattern. Uh, this plot is uh, is the same for all the calculations and all the experimental variables because at the end, uh, this plot is a product of the of the rotation of the protein on the surface of the electron. But at the end, the electron transfer is calculated just for the distance between the surface of the electrode and the external iron sulfur cluster. So, if I rotate the protein, the orientations are going to be the same for all the for all the calculations for the rest of the experimental variables. For that reason, uh, this heat map is repeated for all the results. However, you can see here the pattern of which are the orientations that are better for the transfer of the electrons. Here, well, I need to mention that every small square in a heat map in a heat map plot corresponds to the value of one calculation. Now, if we, we explore the heat map uh, plot for the um, for the conditions where I can get the best absorption of the protein, uh, you can see here, uh, well. Uh, first, I need to mention that one of the things that really shocked me at the moment of obtaining the results is that, uh, well, I need to be honest, I was expecting to find uh, a dominant orientation that could be a that could be absorbed in the surface of the electrode. But according to my simulations or my results, uh, in fact, what I, well, well, what I got was that if, if I have a lot of orientations, there is no the dominant orientation. There is more like a balance between all the orientations. And this is a uh, doubt to the interaction energies here. For example, you can see some patterns so probably it are the orientations that are more favorable to the to the absorption of the protein surface of the electrode but however we can see big difference between the values of the energies so there are some zones with uh, uh, <laughs> a little lower energies but uh, at the end the difference is not so big and one direct consequence of uh, doesn't have big difference uh, between the interaction energies between all the orientations is that I'm going to have uh, low probabilities. Uh, here in the heat map plot for the Boltzmann probabilities, you can see that for every uh, square that corresponds to every orientation, uh, I can see a pattern of the uh, with orientation with high, with very high probability of occur. What uh, I can see is that it's more like a homogeneous distribution of between all the probabilities of obtaining the the protein absorbent in the in the surface of the electrode. So this tells me that basically the absorption of the protein on this condition is uh, random. 
and it's something that was repeated in all the results that I got in others in other simulations with an, with another uh, combination of experimental variables. So basically, uh, I couldn't get a, a specific orientation, but I get more like a, a random distribution of all the orientations on the surface of the electrode. In the case of the heat map of the probability times the electrons transfer, the idea of this heat map plot was to combine um, the probability of obtaining uh, one orientation and to see the contribution to the to, to the total current because uh, then one orientation going to have a transfer of the electrons. So with this heat map plot, the idea was to look for the orientations that more contribute to the total current. See, for example, we can see that the orientation that, in, at least in these conditions, contributes more to the total current was the orientation 130 and 280. Uh, but again, uh, because there are no orientations with high probability of a curve with the wood orientation uh, that these height math plots tell me that is uh, again is very homogeneous and here you can see a graphical representation of the orientation with the lowest interaction energy obtained under these conditions here, uh, well, we can see what is, what is the problem. Basically, the problem is okay. I I can get a good absorber protein, but the orientation is mm, doesn't favor the transfer of the electrons, and for that reason, I don't going to have a a good uh, uh, catalytic activity of the hydrogen as uh, immobilized on the surface of the electrode. So this is just to show what what is uh, what is uh, what is happening. Now we're going to jump to the next uh, example. Uh, what happened when I can get um, a hydrogen acid absorbed on the surface of the electrode and I have a high value of the total current? Here, uh, well, uh, here we can we are we can see the heat map plot for the interaction energies. Basically, again, uh, we can see a very uniform distribution of all the interaction energies if well uh, all the values are negative uh, that is good uh, then that means that the protein is absorbed in the surface of the electrode uh, there is no uh, dominant orientation so it's as you see you can see it's very homogeneous maybe there are some patterns so that probably and I got to discuss it uh, with more detail in next slides it probably is though to the to the effect of patches of amino acids so you can see some zones that probably were well some zones of well some zones where there are some orientation that uh, have a, a little higher absorption on the surface of the electrode and, me, and probably the reason is for that patches but i want to explain a, a little with a little more detail in the next uh, slides now watching the heat map plots of the Boltzmann probabilities for all the orientations uh, again we can see that there are not uh, a single uh, dominant orientation or at least a group of dominant orientations we can see that most of the orientations the probability is very low so again uh, I obtain a, a homogeneous distribution of all the all the orientations on the surface of the electrode and in the heat map plot of the probability times the electrode transfer we can see because uh, I, the probabilities of obtaining such orientations are very low uh, the contribution is not so important there are some points that uh, for example here there is one orientation that we obtain in that 120 200 uh, 48 that has the highest value about the contribution to the total current but it's because uh, the orientation is favorable for the transfer of the electrons and if you see the previous slides well the previous uh, heat map plot you can see that more or less in this zone around this zone we can see um, orientations that uh, 
more contribute to the total current but that is though because this orientation it probably is very close to the surface of the electron at least these orientations are very close to the surface of the electron and for that reason they favor the and the catalytic activity of the hydrogen acid now we can see the orientation with the highest uh, transfer of the electrons and with the lowest interaction energy obtained in my results and this orientation can be obtained under this condition uh, ph5 not electric potential uh, not salt especially and uh, the only inconvenient is that again uh, the probability to obtain this orientation that could favor the transfer of the electron was very low. So, but at the end, this is uh, a good orientation for the transfer of electrons. Uh, watching the results that I obtained, uh, mainly in the table, I can say that the ionic strain is the experimental variable that more affect the absorption of the protein. Basically, the presence of salts uh, decrease the interaction energy. Um, probably this is due to, uh, to the screen effect of the dissolved ions on the electrostatic interactions. Uh, however, one of the problems is that uh, if what I got the very good results of absorption of the protein in, in simulations without salt, the problem is that in the real life, if I want to apply uh, this technology to absorb hydrogen acids on the surface of the electrode in electrochemical devices to produce hydrogen are going to need some salts in the solution and well one reason is because I need uh, I need to maintain the physiological uh, concentration of salts in the solution to maintain the hydrogen acid functional and another uh, problem is that probably if, if I have an electrochemical device, probably I'm going to need salts to, to have some electrical conductivity in the solution. So in that way, I can maintain the flux of the electrons from the electrode to the, to the enzyme. So that's going to be a problem for future experiments that at the end, uh, if you well the salts avoid the absorption of the protein, the salts are necessary to maintain a functional hydrogen acid on the surface of the electrode. So it's one of the things that I would like to mention uh, from the results that I observed uh, during my thesis. In the case of the electric potential, I can say that at least in my results the electric potential had a very low effect in the interaction energy so basically it's not so important according with my results it's not it's not so important from the point of view of the absorption however uh, watching the results and the orientations that i got with the lowest interaction energies I can say that, that the electric potential has an effect, an important effect in the orientation of the protein, the surface of the electrode. Uh, basically, reading a little uh, the bibliography, I can found that this is uh, produced for two mechanisms. The first one is Charles regulation and the second one is Charles patches. In the charge regulation, what happens is that if, if well I have the protein, when I put the protein under the influence of uh, the electric potential, what happens is that the charges, well, the atomic charges that are in, inside of the protein are uh, going to be rearranged in the way that the protein going to create a dipole. The full protein going to be going to behave like a dipole. And then going to orient, that going to going to have the effect of orientate the protein according with the electric potential applied and uh, in my case the protein going to be absorbent in that orientation however in some orientations uh, that are a little um, contraintuitive uh, are attached in some orientations that uh, doesn't follow this rule 
uh, the second mechanism probably is the is the mechanism that has the main role uh, in this case the uh, is the mechanism of charge patches basically what happens is that if i have the surface of the protein i'm going to have some patches or zones uh, with uh, different amino acids that they're going to uh, going to going to favor the absorption of the protein in a determinate orientation. Uh, in my case, in the results, I can found that yes, there are some there are some patches of amino acids, and something that I can found is that uh, the presence of lysins is uh, recurrent in my in the orientations with lowest energies. So probably it could this could be uh, useful for someone that try to uh, absorb the protein. Uh, probably it's a clue for a way to absorb the protein so of the electrode. So um, uh, I go, I use going to left hand in the desk for someone else. Uh, another thing that I need to mention, uh, at least in the case of my results, is that uh, the El, the electric potentials that I use for the calculations are very low. In general, for example, if, if I want to do electrolysis of water, the electric potential that I need to apply to um, for to obtain the electrolysis of water is uh, 1.5 volts. Uh, but in my case, I am uh, starting from very low. Uh, in well. I need to mention that the selection of the potential was uh, was due for the limitations of the software. I remember that I am using the linearized version of the Poisson-Boltzmann equation, so I can use uh, higher potentials because at the end they're so they going to get are will be not so good. But however, I think that uh, do the calculations with the with low electric potential going to give me an approximation of how the protein going to behave uh, on the surface of the electron uh, when uh, when and probably these results could be extrapolated for uh, higher uh, higher potentials. But in any way, it's something that we need to keep in mind. Another thing that uh, we need to keep in mind is that if well they are very low electric potentials, we need to remember that in the inside of the cells or in bacteria they can they can produce hydrogen with very low electric potential. So that is possible, is possible. How they do it is something that I don't know. Uh, another thing that I need to mention in relative to the electric potential is that if we apply um, higher electric, uh, well, higher voltages, maybe we can denatralize the protein. So it's something that we need to keep in mind uh, in the future if we want to use hydrogen acids for the production of battery. Well, if we, if we, if we absorb it in the surface of the electrodes. So just to keep in mind that the uh, higher voltages may be going to be denaturalized the, the proteins. For the experimental variable of the pH, I can mention that it's possible to appreciate a separation between the orientations uh, when I have uh, when well, when I make the calculation with uh, acidic pH or basic pH. Also, I need to mention that um, the orientations at pH tends to, to be similar to those that obtained at acidic pH. They are relatively similar. There is it's not very clear, but that if you see the table, you can see that there are some pattern between the, the separation of the acidic or basic pH. In the case of the protein absorption, I can say that this highest at pH values close to the electric point of the of the protein. And reading uh, well, what the bibliography can tell me is that uh, the absorption of the protein don't depends only on the pH, so something obviously. 
There are other factors like uh, van der Waals, uh, hydrophobic interaction, covalent bonds, etc. However, what I can mention is that the protonation of state of the protein at determinate pHs can uh, favor uh, the presence of uh, charged patches. So, so the effect of the pH is related with the electric potential. So uh, maybe playing a little with the pH electric potential, I can uh, uh, control the orientation of the of the protein, the surface of the leg growth. Uh, another thing that I need to mention, um, well, that is important according with the bibliography that I read, is that uh, in my in my simu in my calculations I consider that the model of the protein was read. We need to remember that the structure of the protein at the end it, at the end was obtained from the PDB file. And the inconvenient of that is that the PDB file is a set of coordinates, it's a crystal structure at the end. And the problem is that it's a, well, it's a rigid model. And the problem comes that in the real life, for example, if I apply a protein in the surface of the electrode, uh, consider all the, all the factors, even the pH, the most probably is that when I push it on the surface of the electrode, the protein going to be deformed. So going to be deformed, okay, for the absorption, okay, going to be deformed for the absorption, and going to be deformed because they were a determinate pH is going to be created, determinate uh, patches of the amino acids. And at the end, that's going to change the shape of the, of the protein. So going to be deformed, uh, if the protein going to be deformed, uh, I'm going to have two consequences. Uh, the first one is that probably if it is deformed, I can have a better absorption, it's a possibility. But by the other hand, uh, one inconvenient is that if I deform the protein, probably going to lose the, the catalytic, well, going to lose his uh, catalytic activity. So it's two ideas that we need to keep in mind at the moment to absorb proteins on the surface of the electrode. Uh, so final note, I need to mention that this topic has been used for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people has tried to absorb proteins on the surface of the electrode with uh, different grades of, uh, of success. But in general, the production of aldrin is relatively low and maybe one of the consequences of one of the reasons for why they can get the very high uh, rates of production of hydrogen is because the protein is deformed at the moment when the, the protein is absorbed on the surface of the electrode do all the experimental variables that we have watched during this uh, research in the case of the absorption corpse, uh, basically we need to remember that I calculate uh, the coverage of the surface of the electrode and with that I calculate the total current. The idea is if I have the surface of the electrode and then I cover it, if I cover the, uh, the surface of the electrode with orientations that can favor the transfer of the electrons, I'm going to have a highest uh, highest total current under the experimental conditions that I tested. Uh, here, uh, because uh, another thing that we need to remember, because uh, for me the um, uh, the way to model the concentration of the protein was to use the osmotic pressure. And uh, then all the results that I am presenting are in arbitrary units. Uh, that well, that doesn't mean that they are uh, useless. That means that at the end, they the main purpose of these curves is to compare the conditions in which I can get the the better results. Here, for example, uh, the the plot well, the plot A uh, represents the calculations obtained at zero electric potential and uh, 0.50 molar of salt. 
under these conditions I can say that I can get in the highest total current at uh, pH 5 in the case of the of the plot bit that uh, is obtained uh, when the conditions are well the only difference is the is that uh, these plots are without salt uh, again I can see that the, the pH 5 is the is the best condition to obtain the highest total current however uh, in this plot I can see that there is a, a influence of the pH in the results uh, something that I need to mention is that if you will um, the curves help, help us to determine it, which conditions are the best for get the to get a good absorption a good total current if you, if you are very uh, only interested in in watch the absorption of the pro of the protein uh, try to watch the values of k in the table and the absorption constant because at the end they going to going to be the uh, direction of, of yes a direction and uh, which conditions are the best for the absorption of the protein so watching the uh, the values of key i can say that there is an influence of the, of the ph in at least in the calculation with uh, salt with the calculation salt free and there is an influence of the ph on the values of key or the values of, uh, of the absorption constant so it's something that we need to keep in mind at the moment of watch this uh, these plots okay we have watched uh, the plots of absorption uh, without uh, applying an electric potential now we want to see what happened when i apply an electric potential and here we can see that the electric potential has an effect and the total current and the main uh, notable impacts are at pH at pH, um, pH 9 uh, for example in the case of pH 9 we can see that when the electrode is a negative target uh, the protein has a higher affinity that uh, when the prot when that sorry does that uh, when the electrode is positive charged. So uh, the this plot uh, can help the reader to determine to which conditions uh, could be the better for the experiments when I would try to absorb the protein on the surface of the electrode. Uh, then, as I mentioned, well, the and the, uh, the application of the electric potential really didn't affect too much to the absorption energy but can affect to the orientation of the protein uh, another thing that we need to mention about these absorption curves is that again i mentioned during the methods is that i use the legmir model and the, in, in order to use the Lagmir model, you need to do a lot of assumptions. Um, some of the assumptions is that, uh, well, basically you consider that the protein going to behave ideally, so the protein don't interact with another. We don't create uh, double layers. We don't create uh, aggregates, etc., etc., etc. Are things that really happen uh, during the absorption of the protein? so that made me think that probably uh, comparing the res well uh, this results uh, i really don't want to compare directly with the results doing in exp with real experiments because at the end as i mentioned there are a lot of factors that really are involved in the absorption of the protein surface of the electrode uh, but for me what I am thinking and for the results that I am watching is that probably one of the reasons for what uh, in the real experiments they don't get the highest rates of, um, of production of hydrogen is because uh, the probably the proteins uh, they are absorbed on the surface of, of the electrode not well oriented and probably they are making aggregates so 
I think that maybe is one of the possibilities, but it's just an idea that I launched to the uh, to someone else to 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 someone to want to listen to me. Uh, finally, we arrive to the section of conclusions. Uh, as a first conclusion, I can say that the absorption of the hydrogen ions on the surface of the electrode, measured by the interaction energy, was mainly a factor for the presence of salts in the solution. Uh, the second variable that was tested that was more or less important was the pH, and after that was the electric potential apply on the electrode. Uh, a second conclusion is that uh, well if well the pH and the electric potential applied didn't play a very important role in the absorption they play a very important role in the in controlling the orientation of the protein on the surface of the electrode. So that is my second conclusion. As a third conclusion, in the case of the total current, uh, well, the result shows that there is a positive syn synergy between the Boltzmann probabilities of the orientations and the electrons transfer. Uh, another result that I want to mention is that uh, in my results, uh, in the orientations with the lowest interaction energy, always there was the presence of patches of amino acids. So I think that these patches from amino acids have a very important role in the absorption of the protein and the surface of the electrode. Also, I need to mention that the formation of these uh, patches uh, depends on the solution pH. And another thing that I would like to mention is that inside of these patches always was uh, recurrent uh, the presence of uh, lysine. So I think that the presence of these uh, patches of amino acids containing uh, lysines could be used in the future as, a, as an anchorage to fix the protein in the surface of the electrode. So I just would like to mention for uh, for future future research that trying to develop new techniques to absorb the protein in the surface of the electrode. Just to keep it in mind. A uh, final conclusion that I would like to mention is that, uh, and this is something that I found a little disappointing from my research, is that I couldn't find a dominant orientation. Uh, even playing with all the variables, I couldn't uh, find a dominant orientation. And what uh, I really could see in my results is that when I try to absorb the protein in the surface of the electrode, what I want to get is more like a uniform distribution. So all the orientations are going to have more or less the same probability to be absorbed. So don't going to be a dominant uh, orientation. And that then uh, maybe that could uh, resolve the problem of what is difficult to obtain the production of hydrogen at the moment of in the real life in the laboratory. When you try to make an extraction of protein and cover the electrode, always the articles that I have read, they report to a very low production of hydrogen. Um, maybe the reason is because most of the proteins are absorbent in, uh, in the ground orientation that uh, doesn't favor the, the transfer of the electrons and doesn't, fi and doesn't favor the catalytic activity. So uh, why this happened, I really don't know until the moment. I, well, I can say some things about the experimental variables, but at the end my results say that with the, with the experimental variables that I test, I want to get a, a random distribution of all the orientations. So, uh, well, uh, at the end, I just want to mention that was a, it's a result. So it's a result that I want to report to you and maybe could be useful for someone else in the future. 
Well, once that I have mentioned the conclusions of this research, I would like to say that this is not the end of the tale. Uh, for the future goals, I am planning to continue with the research. I, I am planning to do more calculations. Especially, I want to improve the model that I, uh, I use it for these calculations. I want to include uh, more experimental variables. Uh, especially, I am interested in, t in, in do calculations in thermotolerant hydrogen acids because I feel that the ones that I could incorporate these enzymes in an electrolyzer the most probably is that I want to uh, well I want to deal with the high temperatures because at the end if I have electrolysis of water I want to have a resistance and for that reason I want to have a high temperatures um, if, if you remember high temperatures can denaturalize uh, proteins so for to ob overcome this problem I think that could be a good idea to use a thermotolerant hydrogen acids because at the end they can resist high temperatures so I am planning to do calculations on this kind of, uh, of enzymes so uh, another uh, uh, improvements of the, of, uh, for the calculations in the future I am planning to incorporate the, the flexibility of the protein. This is a little more complicated, but, but this is one of the things I really would like to do. So, uh, well, it's just part of the future goals that I am planning to do uh, for my research. And in this point, I would like to say thanks to all the people that was involved in this research. I need to say thanks to all my colleagues in Mancinelli, all the people that was involved in the research in one and another way, to all the people from Politecnico in Milan, all my professors, and especially I need to say thanks to my thesis advisor who was with Rouse, thank you, and thanks to Christopher Cooper for inviting me for, uh, to Chile to do an internship and also for be part of the team that developed uh, PicPi. So thanks to you guys, because at the end, if nowhere for you, I couldn't do this research. Uh, also need to say thanks to CONACYT. Uh, CONACYT is the Consejo Nacional de Ciencia y Tecnología de México. Because if nowhere for that organization, I couldn't do all, all the research and achieve all the goals that I have got during my life. Conasip uh, has been involved uh, during my career and all of the stage of my career from the beginning when I start doing my bachelor in the Universidad Autónoma de Baja California Sur in marine biology. Uh, when, I, when I was doing my master in the Instituto Tecnológico de Durango and now during the, the, the PhD. Also during that period, I need to say thanks to Gina Gim because was my professor in, during my bachelor, my thesis advisor. I need to say thanks to uh, Ruben Gonzalez because he was my thesis advisor during my during my master. And also in that period was when I began to do the internships in in Europe. My first internship was in Basel. I need to say thank you to Angelo Bedani in his time because also he helps me to publish on articles. Uh, be, um, at the end, all these people was part of the of my career. So I need to say I need to say thank to thanks to all these people that has been involved during my career. And I don't know. I know what to say. <laughs> I don't want to say more things about the things. Uh, maybe to my friends my family and between my friends to Natalia for me for his friendship and a uh, big part of the reason for why I finished doing the the PhD in, uh, in Milan so for all you people thanks a lot and thanks a lot for the for all the audience to listen to my presentation Finally, uh, some, 
some considerations that I need to mention about this research is that if well I did all the calculations, all the simulations with uh, all my heart, really I put a lot of effort and try to got the, the best results. I need to mention that in order to obtain these results I need to accept a lot of uh, assumptions. So uh, then one of my, uh, one of my uh, slices is a uh, is a square cow and this is more like a joke because um, imagine that I want to cattle cows and in order to cattle cows I decide to create a model like uh, all the science so I create a model and I consider okay I have a cattle uh, well sorry I have a cow is uh, probably I can draw it I can model the horns all the shape etc etc what the cattle what the cow eats but the problem is that if I try to model it something that is very similar to the real life it's going to be very complicated so then I realized no it's very complicated so I prefer to model it uh, circular cow it's simple I can do it then after make some calculations I discovered that oh it still is very complicated so I decided to make a, a square cow because it's simple and I can get the results so the problem with that idea is that if you make a lot of assumptions probably you can be lost at the moment to obtain the results because at the end and the square cow is not real and is well maybe it's, uh, the results that you obtain at the moment to model it that the square cow is no it's not a it's not applied to uh, real life uh, however, I need to mention if well, well, if well, we need to take these results with the occasion. Uh, I need to mention that the value of this research is to create a model and use it to understand how, what happened in reality. That is the real value of the models to try to find a way to understand the reality. So. It's something that I need to uh, clarify to all the people that watch this presentation and read the article about this research that need to be careful about all the results. Uh, at the end, uh, the, what uh, the science wants is to first see the reality. And then if, if I do a lot of calculations and I obtain some results, uh, a part of the articles that all the people wants to do, uh, the, the real then is to obtain a vision of the reality, a picture of the reality. So uh, again, I put all the effort to obtain a, a closest model to try to understand the reality. So I hope that this uh, research be very useful for someone that uh, watch my presentation, read the article, and try to understand the reality as it is. Uh, finally, uh, second thing, well, finally I need to mention that I did all this research, and, well, and this presentation, with the idea that the people could see the results, and at the end I would like to request the help for all, all my audience, all the people that watched the, this presentation, to collect funding because I would like to continue with this research and also, as you know science is expensive so I need uh, funding to continue to continue with this research and also I need to mention that uh, one of my dreams has been to create a company for the production of hydro maybe in this point the, the technology is still very green uh, it's very raw but I am sure that in the future this technology is going to be successful for the production of hydrogen. So if we dedicate uh, more effort and more funding for this uh, kind of research in general for hydrogen production, I am sure that at the end we're going to achieve the goal of transfer the the use of the um, well to transfer the use of fuel fuels. Uh, to ener uh, to hydrogen as a, as the main energetic ener uh, energetic carrier for the u for the humanity. So again, I consider, it, please, <laughs> if you can, if you some possibilities, you can donate some 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 money from this research. 
Here I will up this presentation for YouTube so you can see all the links, all the stuff. So if you want to donate, if you consider that this is important, I really appreciate your donations. And I I really want to use this money to continue with the research. With nothing more to say, I need to say, I, I would like to say goodbye for all the people that has uh, been involved with the research, uh, for my audience. Uh, thank you to you a lot and see you in another videos and in other articles and in other presentations. I want to continue with this stuff, with the, with the research of production of hydrogen. Um, thank you to you for all your time. So, goodbye.